off the wires for the fan control got this switch to turn the fan on and off I'm gonna put it right here in the thermostat housing using my all 16s well, kind of a nice thing about this sensor or switch is there's actually no hole in here it just screws into the end so if you ever have to change it you're not gonna drain any coolant or anything never used this style so I guess we'll see how well it works just a on off switch so it doesn't really matter which wire goes to which end it's just got to complete the circuit since all I could find locally was the 14 gauge connectors and that's like a 18 gauge wire I just double it over give a little more meat to crimp on We'll see when I put it back together how I end up liking the way the wires lay. I'll work on the uh, the vacuum pump. I really don't like that. Maybe I should have got a smaller vacuum pump. Yes. It's gonna have to be it. I really like it. I don't like where this is, it's ugly, but it's the best spot I got. Ah, perfect, look at that, it's like it was made for it. Almost. Let's see if that five millimeter works in there. meant to be hmm yeah that was a bad plan that would flow a lot nicer guess we're doing it that way it's gonna make it even uglier but whatever I guess I guess I could have gotten some vacuum 90s and pretty it up. Maybe I'll do that later. Let's see if we can find a keyed power source. Turn the key on. Okay. This wire was something from the old EFI with the computer. 
that's not needed with this engine. And this works out pretty good because it was the last one that was just a dead power sitting down in there. I thought I might use it for something else later, but I guess I found out what that something else later is. To really, I've never actually had one with this wiring diagram on it before. It's a little interesting. But instructions show how to wire it up, so that's what I'm going to do. And two. goes to pin three Step on the brake pedal, see what it feels like. Okay. Turn the turn the key on. Finally getting the turbo on the Geo Metro with the Kubota. Um, I already moved the wiring and radiator hose and stuff out of the way. Got the new housing drilled and tapped for the exhaust temperature. Now I'm just going to pull this manifold out and I need to pull the uh, dipstick tube out because uh, that's where the oil is supposed to drain at so I'm going to add a little spick it off of that to take the oil return. Um, normally the dipstick's on the other side but the starter's in the way with it in here. I got the dipstick tube out and all cleaned up and cut the piece of pipe that's going to go on it for the turbo drain. I just got to weld them together. All right while the return's cooling we need to supply for the turbo so we're going to take the pressure sensor right there and put this T in so put the sensor back out here and then this will feed the turbo. All right, I've got the T all in where the uh, pressure sensor used to be and now that this is cool enough, I'm gonna drill down through here to make the hole. And then we'll be able to put that back in and then should just be manifold turbo piping. The turbo manifold bolts right up, turbo bolts right to it. Got the high pressure oil line ran down to the T. Oil return going there. Got a picked up a flange here off eBay, and I just gotta get this U bend cut to the right spot to go down and meet up with the uh, the exhaust that was there before. Looking at this now, I'm curious if I'm going to have enough room for the alternator to sit in there with the turbo, but we'll see what happens. It also seems like it sticks up a bit higher, so uh, we'll see if it clears the hood. Got the line for the boost gauge hooked up. Just hooked it to this uh, manifold port that used to come off the crankcase ventilation here. I'm going to take the crankcase ventilation and run it over into the air filter over here. All right, turbo's all bolted down. I got a, there's no intercooler. It's just running straight from the turbo to the intake. Just use some 
pieces of pipe, well, the other half of that exhaust pipe there, some old radiator hoses and a old piece of pipe from when I put compounds on a uh, Volkswagen Rabbit truck that was a diesel, just for shits and giggles. Um, used a piece of that and everything to get the plumbing ran. Got the exhaust temperature sensor in. Oh, um, tried a new tack because the other ones haven't worked from Autometer, and it's got this sensor that you put on your alternator there. It's going to have to be calibrated. Um, we'll see what how we're looking after I get it installed on if I'm going to get it calibrated currently or not. But at least I'll be able to see if it works. It'll be pretty simple. I just got to take the other tack that's in there out. Got to take that tack out, which doesn't work, the one on the far right. Um, it's supposed to use the pickup on the flywheel, and it's not working. But all the wires are there other than the ones from that new sensor, so I'll just pull the new sensor wires up and swap the gauges out. All right, got everything all buttoned up. Top's cooling off. Made a little mess there. Got the new tack all hooked up. There we go. New tack in place. I'm gonna fire it up and see if it works. It's not calibrated yet. I'm gonna have to uh, do some runs down the road and look at miles per hour and what it's reading and adjust it until they they match up. But we can give her a shot here and see if it works. But it definitely needs calibrated because that should be like 3,000 RPM instead of a thousand. See if I can do something with that real quick. Seems like that might be close. That's roughly where the idle is, maybe, but that should be about where the, uh, what do you call it, governor's set at. I'll just have to see when I drive it around, see what the, uh, um, do the math for the miles per hour and what RPM I should be at at that miles per hour and see how accurate it is. 